He was one of Europe's most senior politicians and led the World Trade Organization for eight years. He has witnessed emerging countries changing the world economic order, including China. I've come to Paris to meet Pascal Lamy. I'm going to find out his vision for the world. Mr. Lamy, yeah. nice to meet you. Good to see you. And his stories with China. My first time in China was in uh, July 1986. I was then the chief of staff to the president of the EU Commission, Mr. Delors. And uh, Mr. Delors was the first president of the European Commission to pay an official visit to China. Lamy recalls seeing Beijing roads dominated by bicycles, while cars were an exception. Who would expect that not many years later, the former kingdom of bicycles would become the world's largest car producer? But Lamy's first impressions of China weren't based on its economics. Most people today see China as a modern, vibrant, uh, growing, uh, successful economic country. My first entry into China is it's very, very long and complex and sophisticated civilization. It's incredible past, art, literature, uh, and as I said, uh, sophistication. Among his many roles these days, Lamy teaches at China Europe International Business School in Shanghai. He says his interactions there open up a new window for him on China. What do you think of the Chinese students while you were working in China? These Asian students are sort of more eager to get what I have in my brain than others. You sort of feel this guy there knows things I should know, I'm going to pump his brain. And by the way, <laughs> it, it results in the fact that teaching one hour is more tiring. They still believe that their life will be better than their parents. So this notion that China is moving forward, uh, that you can have ambition, that the future will be better than the past, is quite striking. And a major event that made this happen is China's 2001 entry into the World Trade Organization. At that time, Lamy was Trade Commissioner of the EU and its negotiator with China. I think the most crucial part of the negotiation was uh, in the discussion I had uh, with Chu Wongji, who's a man for whom I have a huge respect. A negotiation is a game where you hide your cards until the very last minute. Huh? It's a sort of a poker game. A negotiation of this kind only concludes when the real cards are on the table. Huh? And when Zhu Wangji told me, look, this I will not do. And when I told him, this you don't want to do, but you will have to do it because I will not change my position either. After 15 years of lengthy negotiations, the ministerial conference so agrees. The bloc finally welcomed its new member. China did pay a big price. I think it worked because China paid a bigger price than others to join. China benefited more from trade opening than others. More than two decades after its WTO entry, China has become the world's largest trading nation in goods and the second largest in services. The most impressive is the consistency and the duration of this period of high growth which China had and which had lifting hundreds of millions of Chinese people out of poverty, improving the level of education and pushing China upwards uh, the added value layer and the tech layer where it is now. As China develops, it also has to wrestle with challenges. The world is now being reshaped by conflict, pandemic, and protectionism. Do you think globalization is at risk? I don't think uh, we, the world will deglobalize. 
Uh, but I believe it will globalize differently. We now are in a period where the balance between efficiency and security has changed. This might increase security and probably will in some areas, but at a cost because the economies will be less integrated. I'm not of the view that they will disintegrate. So we have a different globalization. The speed of integration uh, will diminish. Looking into the future, Lamy outlines a path for China and Europe in the midst of global geopolitical turmoil. What I think is the future is Europe and China having their own relationship. I, I think it's, it's the recognition of the difference. This is the real starting point. It's like, like in a negotiation. At some stage, you have to sit in the boots of your interlocutors, try to understand how he or she sees the situation, sees you. And once you've done that, you're nearer, in my view, to the real sense of a relationship. It has to go both ways. We have to find our own way.